All right, new month, new incubator project. Just got this in the mail. Let's open it up because I actually have no idea what this incubator looks like. I had a company reach out and they wanted us Ooh, to try it. Cool. So let's open it up and see what this thing does. Smart incubator, I love it. All right, that's small, compact. Looks pretty simple. Looks like a way to add in the humidity from the outside. All right, so we got it over here on the table. We can plug this in for power. Oh, there it turned on. Egg turner turns. 38C. Oh goodness. Another incubator that's in Celsius. All right. I think 100 degrees is just under 38 degrees Celsius. So that's why we use our little thermometer inside so we can check and make sure I'm doing it right. This hooks up to the straw. Straw hooks up to the outside, and then a water bottle can actually fit right in top here. Oh, it just pours out. Maybe there's a specific kind of bottle to put on there. So for now, I'll just pour water through here into this tube and then into the incubator. I have been wanting to hatch out some more of these eggs. These are our Indio Gante eggs. They're the tallest chicken in the world. We hatched them out last January, February. Now they are a year old. And we've been having a lot of people that want to get eggs from them and we just don't get enough. This is, we've got eight eggs that we've collected over the past week. We've got four hens and one rooster, but I also thought it could be a fun little experiment to try hatching the tallest chickens in the world, along with the smallest quail in the are world. Are they for real? They look fake. These are our button quail eggs. Let's do a little experiment. Let's test out hatching the tallest chickens in the world and the smallest quail in the world. And just like all of our other incubator experiments, this one's going to be given away. That's right. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see how to get entered in that. All right, so the incubator here has been running for a day. So just like a lot of our cheaper incubators, we've had to turn up the, the heat on it so we could create enough heat to get to 100 degrees Fahrenheit inside. And so now I've got nine Indio Gante eggs to put inside and six or seven button quail. Let's see what we can fit in here. And some of these spaces are pretty big, so we can we can put probably three or four in a couple of these spaces. Got a nice full incubator there. Phew. Took a little effort to get the lid back on. Oh, this is perfect. So we're at day one on March 1st, and so we're gonna go till about March 21st, 22nd. But let's check in here in about 10, 15 days and candle some eggs. So we're on day 16 with these eggs. And so I wanna do a quick candling just so I can take out any that haven't developed and show you a couple problems with this incubator. One, you can see we've got our towel in here. It fluctuates a lot from day to night where it'll go 100, 101 during the day when it's really warm. It'll go down to, I've seen as low as 96, but usually somewhere in between there, 98 to 100 is usually where it's staying. And that's not too bad, but it's the problem that I can't put the styrofoam over this because of the, the water intake. And there's nothing to put on this spot right here to be able to close it off from the water flow. I wish there was a cap on it. If you wanted to just keep it closed and put the water on the inside, you could do that. So then you could actually put it inside the styrofoam. Anyways, we're not able to do that. So we've got to cover it with a towel. Let's do a quick candling before the button quail eggs hatch this weekend and the Indio Gante eggs hatch next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Egg number one's not great. This one's tough to tell too, but I'll keep it in. Mm, this is just yolk here. This one can be tossed out. Hard to tell. I th I'll keep that one in. Sheesh. That's empty. My goodness. Horrible. Gosh, I think that one's empty too, but I'm gonna keep that in for now just in case. That's empty. <laughs> That's horrible. So that was really bad. I'm keeping five and I'm tossing five, but I don't think I have a single developed egg in this incubator. I think it has a lot to do with how difficult it was to control the temperature in this thing. Okay, we got them all organized here. This has been the most disappointed I've been in a hatch in a long time. Had 10 Indio Gante eggs in here, had a bunch of quail eggs. We've got a couple days left to see if the quail eggs are any good. I don't think any of our Indio Gante eggs are gonna hatch. Really disappointed with this incubator. Well, this first round didn't turn out very good. We had one button quail egg hatch and nothing else hatched. Let's go ahead and turn off this incubator and see what happened with these eggs. Now we're gonna try this again. We're gonna try it with some different eggs this next time because these are new layers with our Indio Gante, so I wanna make sure that they are actually fertile. So we're gonna try some different eggs, but we only had one out of the seven or eight button quail eggs hatch. So there's definitely some kind of issue with the incubator. Becky was really smart while I was on a little trip. She she put a little mirror in there. Any chicks in general are gonna do pretty poorly when they're by themselves. They love to have somebody else to just to give them some security, show them how to eat and drink. And so it can always be a struggle 
with one little button quail chick. So having the little mirror in there can help them see a friend, keeps them under the heat lamp. We're gonna take these eggs out, open them up, and then we'll try again with this incubator. Nothing, nothing, just scrambled eggs. So let's go back to the drawing board, try some different eggs and see if we can get something to hatch. All right, we are ready for round two with this incubator. I, I'm really nervous with it and I've got something that I, that I need to hatch, but at least it's something that I can risk for it to not go perfectly. We actually got some eggs here and let me explain what we're doing. So last round, we were able to get none of the Indio Gante eggs to hatch. I've got some more Indio Gante eggs all along here. I've got six and then I've got some along here. I've got some dark Brahmas and a couple Easter egg eggs. And this is a project that is for some of our friends and they want about 10 to 15 chicks from that. I'm gonna make my friend's eggs the priority. Six dark Brahma eggs in there two Easter Eggers, and then maybe four Indio Gante eggs in here. We've got it up and running. We've gotten it to level out. It's a little warmer this time of year now that we're in mid-April. I've got the styrofoam around it this time, so it does work around here. And then I've got a little bit of room in the middle for a few more button quail eggs because our button quail is now about a month old and is still alone. So we're hoping to get a, a buddy for him or her. So let's get these eggs in here and give this incubator one more shot. The temp has been staying steady at 100 now and that was the issue I was having is that I was getting a lot of fluctuation just with the air cover without the styrofoam on here. So hopefully this will work out a lot better. All right, here we go. Day one, six dark Brahmas, two Easter Eggers, three Indio Gante so I can keep my thermostat in here just so I can check the temp. And then I've got a bunch of button quail eggs around the middle. So let's close this up and check them out in about 10 to 15 days to see if we're getting some development this time around. Oh man, so this hatch is definitely going differently than the last one. The styrofoam is working really great on it. And we had almost nearly every button quail <laughs> hatched last night. I see three, four, five. My goodness, but I'm trying to get them out. I'm trying to get their eggs out and get the egg turner out. It's day 16 or 17 and I've got the other eggs here. I'm gonna put them back in there. But I've gotta get everything out in here and that's a big challenge with button quail because the button quail just keep going for the edges. Now it'll be fun to show you how they look compared to the one previous button quail that hatched last time. Look at this. Right down here below and at about five, six weeks almost looks full size compared to these super tiny quail. You know this could be a pretty difficult task. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put these guys down in the brooder down here with the the big button quail and hopefully they can be buddies together because I need to get the, the bigger eggs back into this incubator. So here's our about five to six week old and then our little baby quail oh my goodness look how fast they grow all right so we're able to get the incubator back to normal we've got the little button quail down here under the heat lamp and so we've got everything back in here like normal styrofoam's back on phew getting them separated was a little bit of a task but makes everything a little less stressful now for the the big eggs to do their hatching in a few more days So it is day 21 and we woke up this morning to chicks hatching. Look what we've got in here. So the eggs that we had in here, we had some dark Brahmas, had some Easter Eggers, and we had some of our own Indio Hogante eggs and we have never hatched out any of our Indio Hogantes. All right, what do you think you have here? These are the dark, dark Brahmas. Yeah. Those are looking great. All right, which ones do we have here? So we've got an Easter Egg here. Really cute, gray fuzzy one. And we are not sure, but it has feather feet. Could be an Easter Egger. It doesn't look like a Brahma. Two more dark Brahmas. It's feather feet. Well, this one just hatched. This might be another dark Brahma or some kind of mix. All right, so these guys are all ready to go to the brooder. 
we've got a few eggs left to hatch and we still have not hatched one of our own Indio Gantes, but one is getting ready to hatch out. It's made about halfway around, so it just has a little bit left to go. And that one will be done. There's one more Easter Egger, two more Indio Gante eggs in there. We hatched our Indio Gantes a year ago. So we'll be so excited to see one hatch out from our own flock. And then check this out, the button quail have been doing so well down here. Yeah, she is taking care of them. She's kind of being a mother, like sitting on them, keeping them warm. She teaches them how to eat and get water. She's, she's doing great. It's really neat to watch. We've never had a button quail go broody, so we've never had the opportunity to see if they would mother their own chicks. And it's really nice to see that they actually will. Now, we haven't had one go broody, but this one is taking care of all the chicks. So, two months ago, we hatched out the Bruges fighters. They're doing great. They're out in their own little chicken coop. And then about three weeks ago, we hatched out our Oliveager mixed flock. And these guys have been feathering out, plus it's starting to get warmer. So we're gonna move these guys outside to make room in this brooder for all of our chicks that are just hatching now. These guys are looking fun. This was a uh, black copper Moran's crossed with our cream leg bar rooster, the general, and then uh, this might be an all cream leg bar. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Very good. Little fuzzy one. That's Wubbles. Wubbles. <laughs> like you? I have two Wubbles. They're looking so cool. Me. Look at that pretty bird. Yeah. Oh, careful. Careful. We don't grab the neck. What do you think? Can you pet him? Can you pet him? There you go. So we used this a long time ago as like a rabbit hutch where we kept a male on one side and a female on the other side. We've got our male rabbit in another spot now, but now it's a great little transitional housing from inside to outside for some smaller chickens. They can get a little bit of shelter and then they get a little experience of the outside as well. So now we have our brooder freed up. I can do a quick cleanup of this and then we'll be able to get the newly hatched chicks and bring them out into here. All right, so we've got our food, our water, and now we've got some chicks ready to go in here. got our first Indio Hogante to hatch out. This little guy looks so amazing. Oh my goodness. That was a little bit of a weird thing going on here. Some of the yolk still needs to be absorbed here and so it's actually why it seems like it's coming out of the bottom. It's actually like the where the umbilical cord would be out on a person. And so as soon as that dries up in the next day or two, I think that'll just dry up and fall off. Not a big deal, but it looks a little weird on them. And then we got another cute little Easter egg or chick. And so these guys can go out into the brooder and meet their friends. And oh my goodness, look at a little button quail chick and our Indio Agante, the world's tallest chicken breed and the world's tiniest quail breed right next to each other. They're both, well, a day hatched and about three, four days hatched. So right at about the same age. Oh, that's wild. And then here's a nearly full-size button quail next to the chick. This one hatched out about a month and a half to two months ago and is right about the size of this chick. And this is as big as the button quail will get. The Indio Gante, the world's tallest chicken breed, the roosters will get about three to four feet tall. And our 
Our rooster is so much taller than the hens, somewhere about three and a half feet tall. So these guys get extremely large. Those guys did just amazing last night. So let's get inside, wrap things up at the incubator. All right guys, well let's talk about this incubator because this is the way that it should be displayed when it's sold because the first time we used it, we had it without the styrofoam on and just put a blanket over it and it didn't work at all. We hatched out one button quail and no chicks. So the second time we wanted to find some way for it to work, all but two of our eggs hatched. And so I would normally say great results. If that was had been our first hatching experience, but the fact that one, you've got to have this humidity thing here and no way to plug it up, that's annoying. And that you have to have this styrofoam completely around this for it to actually function. It's just mind boggling that they think that's a sufficient enough idea for an incubator. I mean, it's like saying, we're gonna put a good heater in your house, but you're probably gonna wrap, wanna wrap up in a blanket every night to get really warm. Like, I just don't think that that's a great idea for an incubator. If you think that's sufficient to be able to use an incubator, then that's great. And we're gonna give it away to one of you because we don't really want this incubator anymore. But we just want you to know that if you buy this incubator, you're gonna have to wrap it well to keep the temp consistent. And so if you want this incubator, we'll give it away to one person. Just let me know that you want the incubator in the comments, what you'd like to hatch. We'll give this to one of you. But with that said, I. I just can't recommend this incubator. Not the way it was designed with the styrofoam. So thank you guys for hanging out with us with this with this really little hatching experiment. Good luck if you're wanting the incubator and we'll see you guys next time. Go ahead, tell me their names again. Taco. Taco? Taco. Oh, didn't I mean? That was good on